Hey, welcome to Jiropus Tech Talk. Today I'm going to discuss about cluster computing. My name is uh, Stalin. I uh, live in Bangalore. Uh, computer of clusters is the first stage to build cluster computing. There are two stages, of course. One is infrastructure, second one is uh, the software framework which is used to distribute tasks across nodes and execute the result, uh, execute the job and get the result back. So, how do you build an infrastructure? Collect commodity hardware, connect together, that's it, where infrastructure is ready. So, uh, take an example, we have 10 nodes, okay. So, we, we, can, uh, we can run job in these 10 nodes. So, who is going to run the job and who is going to coordinate the jobs, who is going to get the result back, right. So, we need a software framework which will do all these things. So, that framework will start cluster computing framework. So, if you see completely a cluster computing is a combination of the infrastructure as well as the software framework. A software framework is responsible to distribute tasks across multiple nodes and process it, get the result back. So how is it going to do it? A cluster computing framework has intelligence because it has all the information about the worker nodes and the availability of the worker node. When a user submits a job to a cluster, a cluster framework tries to find out the worker nodes which can be used to execute the task. Here we have a five job is distributed across five nodes and once it processes it we get the result back. So this uh, this is how uh, the cluster computing uh, like high level uh, work such. A cluster computing technology is divided into two ways. The way it's going to process the data. One is uh, task distribution, the second one is data distribution. A task distribution is the task is divided into multiple components and spread across uh, multiple nodes. The data distribution is the data is divided into chunks and distributed across nodes. That's it. The example of uh, task distribution is Apache Storm and data distribution is Apache Spark. And we are going to explore Apache Spark more detail. Let's talk about Apache Spark. Uh, Apache Spark cluster computing framework uses a data distribution technique to do cluster computing. To understand Apache Spark, it's really important to understand these five concepts. Each concept cannot be discussed independently uh, because it has interrelated uh, with other components. Uh, let's take uh, resilient distributed data sets is related to Spark contest because uh, using Spark contest we create RDD. Uh, driver program is related to Spark context, executor is the one which is going to execute the task. So uh, we will discuss about each and every one uh, but it's closely interrelated with other. Let's uh, talk about uh, RDD first. What's RDD? RDD is resilient distributed data set. Uh, resilient means a uh, fault tolerance, a uh, distributed uh, is just uh, distributing uh, the data across multiple nodes. Uh, that's what data set is. Um, the core abstraction Spark provides is RDD because whatever job, whatever computation uh, you run, it runs on top of RDD. So we have a data of 1000 records. Uh, we create RDD out of it. Uh, the RDD object might look like this. So we have five partitions, each partition contains 200 records. When we do a computation, uh, these five partitions is distributed into five different worker nodes and that's how we achieve distributed computing uh, through Apache Spark. Uh, Spark context is very important to understand because this is the core. Why do I say core? Because even RDD is created using Spark context. And this is the guy who established connection to the Spark cluster where we will be running our jobs. And Spark context is used to run a job. There are other uh, uh, Spark context features is like creating a shared variables, creating accumulators, all these done by these guys. Even it can, uh, it can manage executors. It can ask for a few executor from Spark clusters. It can uh, kill few executor in Spark cluster, commanding Spark cluster to kill few executors. So all this is, uh, I mean, can be done using Spark context. Uh, we'll talk about in next session about in detail about Spark context. 
Okay, let's talk about driver program. A driver program is nothing but the guy who creates Spark contacts becomes in a driver process. A driver process is a JVM process and we cannot create multiple Spark contacts in a single JVM instance. So we have to have a different JVM instance to create in a second Spark context. Let's talk about executor. Executor is a process which runs inside each and every worker nodes. When we submit a job to a Spark cluster, the executor is the one who is going to execute the task which creates each task will have its own thread. So executor creates a new thread whenever it gets a new task and destroys the thread whenever it finishes. Uh, let's talk about stage and task. To your left side, uh, we have a three lines of code which is kind of on a simple Spark application. So what we are trying to do there, uh, we have on a Scala data objects, object and we are trying to create an RDD object out of it by using se.parallelize method. se is nothing but in a Spark context. On top of it, we are calling a parallelize method providing the data object asking it to divide the data into two partitions. The data RDD object contains uh, array object and divided into two partitions. So how this Spark runtime is going to uh, execute these three lines? Whenever Spark runtime finds there is an action method, then it creates a job out of it. So count here is an action method and it creates a job and it's find, trying to find out like how many stages are there here. Um, if there isn't a shuffle before any action method, then the stage becomes more. So there is no shuffle method uh, in this three lines program. So there will not be uh, more than one stage. But since we created two partitions, it's going to create two tasks. So one job has one stage and it has two tasks because the partitions is two. Let's talk about the, uh, the another example right side. So here, here we have uh, two actions. That's the reason we have a two job. And uh, the job one has only one stage because there is no shuffle method. And as well as job two as well uh, as well like it doesn't have any any shuffle method so again it's the same stage so this is how uh, the spark uh, runtime is uh, going to uh, understand the code and, and constructs the, the stages uh, before it start executing okay let's talk about second example here we have uh, um, yeah, items uh, uh, well uh, wherein uh, which is nothing but in a Scala object uh, which has iPhone 5, Samsung S6, some strings we are going to group by names I mean how many iPhone 5s are there in this array how many Samsung S6 are there in the array so we all know SC parallelize items and we are saying now three partitions create three partitions uh, from uh, the Scala object and we are creating a pair RDD out of it then uh, we are calling a, a shuffle method that is reduced by key uh, so and then we are calling a collect method so here uh, collect is an action method reduced by key is in a shuffle method so there is just shuffle method uh, before action method so we have to what since only one action method we have one job and there is an, one shuffle method uh, before the action method so we have two stages before shuffle and after uh, shuffle and after so we have stage 0 stage 1 and each has three tasks so that's it in next slide I'll uh, get into answer